Good evening and thank you for joining us here at the Friendship Baptist Church of Delaware. We hope and pray that your day has been great and your week has been wonderful. But surely this is the day the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and we're going to be glad in it. The Bible says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his holy name together. Tonight we want to thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, we're getting ready to go in prayer, but we want to call out some names tonight. We want to call out some names tonight. We want you to keep in prayer our sister Stacy Owens, our minister Maurice, who has transitioned to uh, South Carolina to further his education. And we want to pray for our friendship, mothers, and our seniors and those that uh, maybe in the hospital, wherever they might be, that we want to know to let you know tonight that we're praying for you. That the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous avail of much. I tell you, you can never get uh, tired of you can never get enough of prayer because prayer is the key. Faith is the key that unlocks all doors. Listen tonight, we're going to go right into the Lord, go right into prayer tonight, Father. We thank you for this time. We thank you for this moment. We thank you for this time that you have allowed us to come and to worship you and praise you and study your word tonight. Now, Father, the name that we called out tonight, look on Sister Stacy Owens. Look on tonight our mother boy. Look on our seniors tonight, Father. Look on our deacons tonight. Look on every person that is a, per a part of friendship tonight and those of our partners that are viewing us tonight. Father, whatever they stand in need of tonight, let your healing virtue flow right now. We cancel every assignment of the enemy. We cancel every assignment that the devil might try to uh, plague. We we come against the, mind, the spirit of the mind, the spirit of frustration. We come against the spirit of heartache, pain, agony, whatever may be ailing tonight. That, Father, we don't break it, but we destroy it tonight. Now, Father, we thank you. We give your name glory tonight. We give your name honor. We give your name praise. It's in Jesus' name we say amen. Listen, we love you tonight. And we bless God for you joining us tonight. Listen, just a few announcements. Uh, remember that this coming Sunday is our virtual worship encounter. And you can view us uh, right here, 10 a.m., uh, Tell a friend, tell a neighbor, uh, come on and join in on our virtual worship experience because we know that there is a word and a worship with your name on it. Also, that we know that uh, next Sunday, which is the fourth Sunday, will be our in-person worship and you're welcome to join us, uh, to be in fellowship with us at 10 a.m. Also, beginning the month of September will be the 90th church anniversary month. That's right, 90 years of existence. Surely the Lord has blessed friendship. And we want you to be a part of it. We want you to, uh, we'll give you, uh, we have some awesome preachers coming. And so we want you to be a part of it. And we want you to, all of our partners, uh, if you feel, uh, if you'd be so kind, if you would uh, sow a seed of $90, and if not, you don't have the 90, you can sell $45. And our youth up to the age of 18 can sell $9. That's right. You can send it right to the church, 530 East 4th Street, Wilmington, Delaware, 19801. That's right. 530 East 4th Street, Wilmington, Delaware, 19801. And we'll make sure that it gets in the right hands of the right people. Uh, we want you to uh, keep us in prayer. Keep us in prayer. Uh, great things are happening at Friendship. And we want you to be stay connected to us. Stay connected to us um, that you, know, you will know what's going on in the days and the months to come. Listen, it's word time tonight. 2 Timothy 2 and 15. 2 Timothy 2 and 15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed, 
rightly dividing the word of truth. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And tonight we want to study our lesson from this passage and this thought. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Here it is in Psalm 119, uh, verses 105. There were three, there were four areas of this uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. There were four areas that I want us to focus on tonight. And the first area uh, I want us to focus on is the word study. The second one is approved. The third one is workmen. And the last one is ashamed. And the four points that we want to do, those four things, that words that we want to deal with tonight. And the first one we want to deal with is study. Here it is in Psalm 119 and 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Brothers and sisters, we live in a dark world. We live in trying times as I say all the time that we were living, uh, the Bible is being fulfilled, that we're living in a dark and dreary world. It's not a good idea for uh, uh, to go stumbling around in the dark and uh, you don't have without some sort of light. You don't have a flashlight. You don't have no kind of light on your phone, um, but th there could be anything that if that can be hindering hindering you, uh, there might be roots, there might be stumps, there might be rocks, or any other things that obstacles that can, could stumble that you can stumble on and can fall if you're not careful. That's why we, when we study God's word, it is a light unto our path. It tells us the obstacles to watch out for and how to overcome them. It gives us a clear path as we study uh, that you must understand that uh, if you do not uh, understand, if you don't study God's word, uh, these things that, uh, as we said earlier, that these obstacles, it gives us obstacles. It is our guideline. It is our, it is our biblical stance that if we do not, uh, you don't need nobody to tell you nothing. You don't need no prophet. You don't need a soothsayer. What you need is in the word of God. But if you do not study the word of God, you will never know what's in the word. Joshua 1 and 18 says, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and that thou may observe to do all, to do according to all that is written within, for then thou shalt make uh, thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. You, you wondering what uh, what God's will is for your life. Uh, you don't have to read uh, in some other kind of book, but if you spend time in the word, you meditate on the word, you think on the word, you obey the word, and I promise you that the word will bless you and you will be blessed. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of a soul and spirit and of the joint and marrow and is a uh, discipline of the thoughts and intent of our heart. 
God's word is powerful. It speaks to every area of our lives. When Jesus was tempted by the devil, the weapon of choice was the word of God. The weapon of choice was the word of God. When Satan comes to attack you, get in the word. As I say, obey it. Stand on the promises that he has written. Let God's word be your two Ed Sword. Uh, brothers and sisters, I hope that you're listening tonight that when trouble and that when the enemy comes up against you like a flood, no, you don't get even with him. You get even with him by uh, speaking and letting the word be your two edged sword. But you must understand that in 2 Timothy 3 and 16, that it says, all scriptures are given by inspiration of God, and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, and for correction, for instructions in righteousness. All scriptures are from God. It is all important. It is profitable for the doctrine, our belief system. It is good for reproach. It is to correct us when we are wrong. It teaches us what is right. Romans 4, 15 and 4 says, For whatsoever things are written aforetime, they are written for a learning, that we though patience or through patience and comfort and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. We should always be learning. I don't care how old you are. They had a saying that you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but the reality of it is, yes, you can. That you have to open up your mind that you should be willing to learn. This, uh, the only people who have learned all there is to learn in the world are those who have gone already before us. As we are in scriptures, or rather as we study the word, we are to learn more and more about who God is. We are also gain hope and comfort from the scriptures. That when you study, how does it will, how does it affect you? Uh, Isaiah 53 and 6 says, all we like, all we are sheep having gone astray and have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord have laid on him the iniquity of us all. The more we study, the more we know what God has to say about us, our sins and our need for salvation, that when we study how it brings, it should bring an effect to us. It should bring us an effect. Matthew 5 and 16 said, let your light shine before me, men, that you may see that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. The more you study, the more Christ like we are. And the people we see how we, or they will see how we live. And many will glorify God. Second Timothy 4 and 2 says, Preach the word. Be instant in the season, out of season, reproach, rebuke, exalt with all long suffering and doctrine. The more we study, the more we can help others by pointing them to what they need in the word. Uh, we have a generation now uh, that is not trying to point us back to God, but they're pointing us into their own doctrine that if we're not careful, it will bewitch us. It will, it will confuse our very being uh, because here it is that if you're not careful, the Bible tells us don't be carried away with every wind and doctrine. Everything that seems to be right, everything that seems to have it going on is not the will of God. It's from not, it's not from God. But I, Point number two tonight is uh, not only do we have to study, but we need to be approved. What for what reason and why are we trying to prove something? I'm glad that you asked. Romans chapter 12 and 2 says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We don't study the word to prove how spiritual we are or how smart we are, but we prove what a what is acceptable to God, what his will is, and how he wants us 
to live. Can I say that again? We don't study the word to prove how spiritual we are or how smart we are, but we prove what is acceptable to God, what his will is and how he wants us to live. Acts chapter nine, verse 22 said, but Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews with dwelt in Damascus, proving that is very Christ. By studying and obeying God's word, more and more we prove to the world around us that Christ is real and living and active in our lives. Yeah, uh, uh, the, 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 that kind of seems prideful in a way, and it doesn't. But not really. Here's what the Bible has to say about pride. That in Proverbs 16 and 18 says, Pride goeth before destructions and haughty spirit before fall. First John 2 and 16, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. When we study the word, we live it. We share it with others. It is always to be humble. There's nothing prideful about studying and being proved, approved by God. There's nothing prideful about studying and being approved by God. Why can't we just go about our business and not worry about proving anything to anyone? I'm glad Romans 10 and 14 says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? If we just go about our business, who would tell our families and friends about Jesus? Who's going to tell, who's going to tell your grandchildren? Who's going to tell your great-grandchildren about Jesus? But in a Bible uh, 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 we must understand uh, that 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 in Galatians one and ten says for for do I not perse persecute men or God or do not seek to please men for it if I yet please men I should not be a, a the servant of Christ as a Christian we are to live our lives in service to Jesus. And to seek to please him and approve and be approved by him. That is, is in Colossians 3, 23, 24 it says, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that the Lord, ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance for ye servants of, the, of Christ. Here again, what you do, you should be serving the Lord and you will be approved and be blessed by him. Uh, point number three, a workman. What is a workman in Psalm 19, 1 and 2 says, Blessed are the undefiled in the way we walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep the testimonies and that they seek him with the whole heart. A workman is one who seeks to live according to God's word. Titus 2 and 9 says, Exalt servants to be obedient unto their own masters and to please them well in all things, not answering again. A workman is diligent at his job or ministry, seeking to please those they work for, doing their work as unto the Lord. James 1 and 22 verse 20 verse James 1 verses 22 to 25 but ye are doers of the word not here is only deceiving your own self bottom line a workman is one who doesn't just hear the word but does what it says the function of a workman is in Luke 14 and 23 and the Lord said unto the servant go into the highways and hedges and to compel men 
to come in and that my house may be filled. Job 1, job 1 for every Christian is to go out and tell people about Jesus, compelling them to come into the kingdom of God. Ephesians 2 and 8 and through 9 says, For by grace ye are saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of work, lest any man should boast. We are not working our way to heaven uh, because no good works we could possibly do would get us there. It's only by grace. Our good works are done out of love and gratitude for what he has done for us. Let me say that again. Our good works are done out of love and gratitude for what he has done for us. And lastly, we need not to be ashamed. Why do we why do we not need to be ashamed? I'm glad you as Hebrews 12, 12 and 2 says, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finish of our faith, for the joy of the Lord, for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down in the right hand of the throne of God. God despises shame. He wants the cross. He went to the cross to take our shame and our sins upon him. Romans uh, 1 and 16 through 17, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. And everyone that believe it to the Jews first and also to the Greek, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, written the just shall live by faith. God doesn't want his people to be ashamed. We are the king's kids. We have the power of God for salvation. We have what the world needs. And if we study the word of God and live for him, we won't be ashamed. How do we, how do we, how do we rightly divide the word of truth? Isaiah 28 and 10 says, for, uh, Pierce, for pierce must be upon pierce, pierce upon pierce, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. We need to let the scriptures interpret scripture. Let me say that again, that in Isaiah 22 and 10 says, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line. Line upon line, here a little and there a little. We need to let the scripture interpret scripture. Second Corinthians 13 and 1 says, he is the third time. I am coming to you in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Two or three witnesses are needed to make a doctrine. You can make a teaching out of one verse. Study to whom a scripture is written and what time it was written about. There are many interpretations, so many Bibles, so there are many people telling uh, you this and that. What is the truth? John 14 and 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the light. And life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus is the truth. There may be other voices telling you this and that, but the word of Jesus are truth and light. John 8 and 31 32 says, Then Jesus said unto those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. As you see God, or rather as you seek God and read his word, you will know the truth and the truth. And he will make it plain for you. First Corinthians 5, 15 and 58. How... Do we find truth and where, how do we stand on it? Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. 
for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, that we are to stand on truth, confidence, unwavering boldly, no matter what comes our way. Galatians 5, 1 says, stand therefore, stand fast therefore in the liberty where Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. That as we read earlier, that we, we will know the truth and the truth will make us free. As we study the word, believing that it what it says, we are made free in Jesus. God wants us to stand on that word and not every and not even go back to being in bondage as we were before we believed. God wants us to stand. As I said, God wants us to stand on that word and not ever go back to being in bondage as we were before we believe. So I want to tell you tonight, studying the word of God. Don't let nobody tell you something that ain't in the word. Have a have a pick up your Bible every day. Read a chapter a day. And as you read the chapter, allow God to minister to you. Because what you need is in the word of God. But we have to study so that when people come to us, we don't have to fumble. We don't have to act like we don't know. It can come out of our mouths. And it can be right found in the word. I want to tell us tonight. It's time now that we study to show ourselves approved unto God. Stop trying to prove yourself. You, you don't have to study to, to for people. But you need to study to show thyself approved unto God. Don't, don't let you don't have to be ashamed. I don't care. What they call you. So that when you open up your mouth. You're rightly dividing the word of truth. Does somebody need the word that you have in your life? Study to show thyself approved. Father, I thank you tonight. I thank you for this time of word. I thank you for this time that you have allowed us. And that, Father, we've done as you told us to do. But I pray, Father, that someone today will be healed. Someone today will be delivered. That Father, even when they cannot find hope, let them find hope in the word of God. Someone today does not cannot find peace. They can't find joy. They can't find happiness. They can't find love. It's in the word of God. Father, resonate into the hearts and your minds and your people that we may do what is good and acceptable unto you. Now, Father, we love you tonight. We give your name glory. We give your name honor and praise. It's in Jesus' name we say amen. Listen tonight, if you're not saved, and you're not saved, you said, I want to be saved tonight. Repeat after me, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, come into my life. I admit that I'm a sinner. I believe that I that you died and rose again on the third day. I confess you to make you Lord of my life. Come in my heart, come in my mind, come in my soul. Today I stand on a sure foundation that I'm ready to make you Lord of my life. If you said that prayer today, you are saved. And we want to say welcome to the family. Yeah, you have now completed your first step into salvation. Now it's time to get yourself in a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. And what other church to, that invites you to then other than the Friendship Baptist Church, Delaware? Where our motto is, we're not a popular church but we're a powerful church we're powerful through the word through the worship and our discipleship because we understand they will not come they must be brought and it is our job to come and get you
from where you are. Listen, we love you. And may the blessings of the Lord be upon you is our prayer. Go in peace. God bless you. We'll see you in church.